Hi, I'm Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Today I have a very special show. I have Andrew Waltz, and I've met Andrew, um, I think it's been about a year now. And what, you, what, how I met you was you were at Coma Coffee with the um, Sierra Songwriters, uh, doing what they call Songwriters in the Round, where you have four musicians showing off their talents, and they just kind of do song to song to song to song. And I think you've been in at least three of those that I tape every every um, the first I first have, Friday of every month. Yes, I have been on three. Yes. So you're a very talented man, and thank you for being on the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, how would you describe your uh, your music? Um, esoteric, I guess, would be the best. Um, I, I don't try to fit into any Nashville type scheme as far as, you know, selling music or uh, promoting myself, anything like that. Uh, my songs are very much about life in general and my life in particular. Well, I know uh, you've sang many songs, at least I keep on remembering the song that's about your sister, because you always have a story before it about your sister. Uh, yes. Uh, my sister and I got out to Reno in 19... Uh, 64, and at that time uh, we used to, uh, we lived in Reno, we used to go in to the Holiday Hotel and they had a wonderful uh, man there, Charles Gould, and sat in strings, strolling violins that went through there. And my sister used to love to have them play at Um And uh, the song that you are probably mentioning it's called the Kate Cotter song, and um, Kate Cotter was playing at the Siena, which is what the holiday became, and um, uh, Lenny Elbile and uh, Ray Flauda and I decided to go see Kate Cotter, and um, on the way in, we st stopped off at the coffee shop, and I found myself sitting where the old lounge used to be on the corner of the river and Center Street, uh, where my sister and I used to sit and listen to uh, um, Charles Gould and Satin Strings. And uh, so there was kind of a <laughs> uh, spiritual little thing there, and uh, being in that same spot so many years later, I mean, we're talking about. 50 years. When we went down to see Kate, 40 years, I'm sorry, when we went down to see Kate, oddly enough, she had a violinist as her only accompaniment other than her guitar. And my sister, like Kate, was an extraordinary musical talent. Um, and we used to sing together. And in the 60s, Reno had all kinds of no cover, no minimum launches. You could walk in there at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, see some really good music, play some really good groups. It was a very good musical town. Um, lost my sister in an auto accident in uh, 1966. And uh, so uh, I got married and moved on to L.A. and was really out of music for about 40 years. Uh, until my youngest daughter started running around on her own, you know, and never home and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, I'm 72 now, and my experience in music is best described by the fact that because of my age, I was there when Dylan came on the scene and when the Beatles came on the scene, when Elvis came on the scene. and. Uh, we didn't really think they were that good. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never last. <laughs> My sister and I, with our musical background and everything like that, we tended to go more with people like uh, Joan Baez and uh, Chad Mitchell Trio. A little bit less was Kingston Trio. You know? And that was the kind of music that we were interested in. And, uh, she, uh, it's kind of funny when I think about it sometimes, she missed all of the music that we have heard after 1966. Uh, and uh, that's kind of monumental to think about in some terms. 
but uh, that that is the I um, listening to Kate. I kind of slid away from Ray and Lenny, and um, I started scribbling down some lines, which turned into the Kate Cotter song. And I have talked to Kate, and uh, I have given her a copy of the song, and uh, I was very flattered that she liked it. Um, I am actually going to start out with a couple of songs that are not really in Nevada. Uh, they're more South Dakota growing up. And uh, it started out uh, going to Earth Days and seeing people cooking on wood stoves and uh, growing their gardens and baking their breads and stuff like that and uh, kind of the whole retro thing and suddenly realized that in the, oh, 1946 through, you know, on up, living back in South Dakota, we were doing all those things every day, so the name of the song became Every Day Was Earth Day. <laughs> yeah, makes sense to me. Uh, and uh, when I sing the song, I think that'll explain itself. And uh, just here recently, I sang, wrote a couple more songs to go with that. I used to call it my Earth Day Trilogy. <laughs> and just within the last year here, I finally... Uh, wrote another song about Earth Day and kind of the attitude of the people uh, as they're, uh, they're living in that environment, you know. And it was a, a lot more uh, religious uh, experience. Uh, but uh, you had the seasons and you did everything by season and everything was timed. And uh, there was a reason for it and of course there's an old song for that. Um, this uh, song really was based on uh, Psalm 118, which starts out, uh, this is a day that the Lord has made. I always uh, think about when I listen to that music, the, um, the sound uh, puts me in a place where my grandparents, because they both had farms. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, you, was, you know, just, I like your Earth Day songs. Yeah, I have done a lot of research, and I'm actually writing a family history, which is... It's very important. <laughs> uh, 200 or so more pages. I have to give a lot of credit to my cousin George Niesel for a lot of the information that I got. Is that making you kind of do more songs about your family and those experiences? Uh, yes, because uh, I want to teach my children to relate to that. You know, We do so much now that it's just absolutely nonsense You know, with the computers and the iPhones and stuff like that. Uh, and then you, things were very close to the bone. And so you, you basically, you did what had to be done. You didn't ask any questions about it. You didn't complain about it, you know. Yeah, nobody would listen anyway. So, uh, yeah, that is very important to me. And, uh, some of the unpleasant parts of my life <laughs> also go into songs, you know. Well, um, that's part of being a songwriter. You're living it and you're sharing it and you're uh, discussing it. Uh, there's uh, a lot of dry eyes and a lot of wet eyes sometimes at the Coma Coffee when the Sierra songwriters are singing. Yes. And uh, uh, you're, you're pretty uh, spiritual. Um, also, you're pretty silly. <laughs> Virgins, thanks for nothing. <laughs> And you said well, that, was your, that, that was your bumper sticker in the 60s? <laughs> on my 59T bird, yeah. But uh, that, that kind of goes with the Earth Day thing. That was, it had a lot to do with the mores in those days. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. You're, the mores were a lot before stricter pill, before yeah. things got changed to... Uh, and that song is not uh, autobiographical uh, by any means because <laughs> I have four beautiful children and four beautiful grandchildren and we all know each other and, uh, you know, interact and stuff like that. I just thought that was a, a funny one. Well, uh, what we're going to do um, today is when, uh, after the next minute or so, we're going to turn you loose and let you do your music. And then, um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we go to uh, your music? No, I've, uh, I've got, I think, three songs uh, that have to do with the Earth Days. Um, the one of them is... Uh, a trip I made back to Yale, South Dakota, uh, 50 years later to kind of reunite with that child that I'd left behind. That's a big deal. I've done that uh, as well. Yes. Uh, well, and Andrew, let's go ahead and uh, turn you loose. 
Also, last question: uh, What's Pilgrim Blue? That's one of your. Is that your uh, stage name? Well, that's a crayon. In uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that. I was a crayon. I was a king of crayons. <laughs> uh, I I am a pilgrim. I've always felt that way. You know. Uh, is that why you should address your show as Pilgrim Blue? Yeah, and uh, the blue, of course, kind of relates to blues. Okay. Time. Well, most people call you Andy. So, anyways, uh, uh, Andrew, yeah. we're thank you for being on Nevada Trails. We're gonna uh, go ahead and turn you loose in the studio. Okay. And we'll be back in a few seconds with Andy. Thank you very much. I'm gonna take you back to Yale, South Dakota, about 1949-48. Talk about Earth, they're gonna make me smile. Coming back slow, cause it's been a while. But it reminds me of another day when we looked at the Earth in a different way. Sun came up when we milked eight cows, got three dozen eggs from the chicken house. Slop the hogs, fed chickens and ducks, put gasoline in a pickup truck. Had a good breakfast, set out in the rain, put our goods on the morning train. And it was Earth Day, it was Earth Day, every day was Earth Day. Yeah, it was all Earth Days on the farm back then In the summer heat and the winter wind Planted gardens in spring and we canned in fall Peas, beans, squash, tomatoes and all We had out there plumbing when you had to go Windmill pumping when the north winds blow A chicken in the morning was supper later Served with bread, corn and mashed potatoes Butchered the hogs, smoked the ham same fate waited for the little lamb. It was Earth Day, it was Earth Day. Every day was Earth Day. Get up early in the morning, do. Don't be slow, we got work to do. You might think that we had it bad. We were happy for what we had. We thank God for our daily food. I held a lantern well, Mother chopped wood. A fourth grade ant form was ecology. Large hailstones were anxiety, along with tornadoes or a lack of rain. Red weather could ruin the field of grain. We saved paper bags and pieces of string Used butcher paper for a coloring My crayon art, blue and orange Started the fire in the kitchen range For bacon and eggs, fresh baked bread Forget about art, you're a farmer instead It was Earth Day It was Earth Day Cause every day was her stay. Get up early in the morning, do. Don't be slow, we got work to do. You might think that we had it bad. We were happy for what we had. We thank God for our daily food. And I held a lantern well, mother chopped wood. Now this song uh, is back in Yale and it kind of speaks to the attitudes. Wake my children, we are given this day. Creator hath swept the snow away. Step out to an earth turning green. Far as the eye, bright blossoms are seen. Put the plow to the soil at the early morning dew. The moments are precious to hold, the days are but few. Come for the mother's call. Sing to the promise as new life begins. Plant the seeds and sing to the winds. 
the geese gaggle, the rooster crows, the garden calls, and Mother Earth knows. If we believe as we toil today, if we nurture with care and we wait, Creator will send the sun and the rain, our rewards will be great. Come for the mother's call. Our labor today has a far-reaching goal. Speaks to the dearth of the long winter cold. The earth will bring forth from the soil the fruits of the seed and the fruits of our toil. Sing to Creator, thank Mother Earth. If we plant nothing, then no seeds can grow. The bounty of harvest is that which we sow. Imagine the cellars filled with our toil, brought forth from the seeds that we bed in the soil. Quickly don't tarry, plan the harvest today. The Creator beckons with the smell of the earth. We'll water the seedlings, weed them with hope. Working with joy till the mother gives birth. Praise the Creator. Thank Mother Earth. This trip I made back to Yale, South Dakota, 2005, to kind of find that young child that I had left behind. Must be the road that'll take me back through a gone little sunflowers three miles north, turn right at the track. He waits for me there. Thought I'd never be back. Sits high o'er the weeds on the seat of a rusted hay mower. Trading thoughts with his friends who are really pensive sunflowers. Bend in their head. It's all about Abner. Dog patch, and what will we do with those schmooze? Let's ask Lamont Cranston, the shadow knows. We got nothing to lose. Cause there's too many schmooze. And off in the distance, the sound of the great northern blow. Will it come in from somewhere, going where he doesn't know? The Indian year weighs at the child, the child weighs back. Steel wheels drive steel wheels and move the train down steel tracks. Oh, but it will come back. It's high in the shine chair in the corner of a musty saloon. And it's reading Dick Tracy Rest to the Sunday cartoon.
but he's sinking the train. Eating sunflower seeds and nursing a bottle of soda. While his father sells seed corn to the farmers of rural Dakota. Bend in their ears. Off in the distance, the sound of the great northern blow. Coming from somewhere, going where he doesn't know. Steam drives the pistons that move the train down steel track. Do you take him away and Lord knows if he'll ever come back. Oh, but I made it back. Thought I'd never be back. Okay, we're going to head back to Reno now, the old Holiday Hotel. Kate would sing songs which ascended the stairway down long corridors to a time far away. But the voices have passed and the places have changed. Yet voices are present and the places the same. Let our violins playing as there were violins there. Cool satin strings perfuming her air. Kate was in one world and I in another, but we were together in yesterday's garden. And I was lost in my vision in a faraway land. Falling through time until Kate took my hand And there were violins playing as there were violins there Cool satin strings perfuming her hair And Kate was in one world and I in another but we were together in yesterday's garden. Mm -hmm. And I saw your face against the indigo's face. You were singing Kate's song from a faraway place. And there were violins playing. As there were violins there, cool satin strings perfuming her hair. Mm -hmm. And I saw your face against the indigo face. You were singing Kate's song from a faraway place. There were violins playing as there were violins here. Now this is Nevada. Take us out to Elko County. And this song was requested uh, <coughs> to be written by the lady that bought me this guitar. So I guess she can commission that. And it was uh, the subject of the candle in the window. I saw coyotes sitting patient near the water's edge. 
He watches as each bright light goes out until there is only one single candle in the window. She has chased the hunters and the dogs and their malice from the meadow. He has made a contract with her. He will eschew the fat hen, herd grandma sheep back to sanctuary with devotion. He is her lover too. The candle in the window is his promise. The contract is the only thing that he owns. I close my eyes to all that I know. I envision before me that long high desert road. Three hundred miles ahead, I see the warm glow where she places her candle. On the window of my soul Many are the miles My shoes have trod Till I reach love in the moon Between man and God While I travel the desert Mountain heat wind night she lights her candle in the window of my soul. Time-worn hands trim the candle with care. Her face flickers softly against her dark hair. She knows I return in the end, no matter how long. For she holds my soul, and she is the song. Her still dark eyes stare out into the Her mind guides my feet, she will draw me to her light. Like the moth, I am attracted 